Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. And today we're in Alamogordo, New Mexico. And we're tasting pistachios. And wine. Alamogordo, New Mexico is about an hour drive from Las Cruces or 90 minutes from El Paso, Texas. It's also just 15 miles from White Sands National Park, which we'll share with you in an upcoming episode. For a place you've probably never heard of, there's a lot to see and do. There's the Alameda Park Zoo, the Planetarium, Toy Train Depot, miles of hiking trails, White Sands National Park, award-winning wineries and breweries, as well as the New Mexico Museum of Space History. Those who've traveled in New Mexico remember the impossibly blue skies, often with very white puffy clouds. And there's actually scientific reason for this. The altitude combined with clean dry air is more efficient at scattering light than humid or dirty air, and blue light scatters more than other colors. Our campsite for this trip was at the beautiful Oliver Lee Memorial State Park, which is the closest RV park to White Sands National Park. Situated in the foothills of the Sacramento Mountains, the spacious campsites here all offer amazing views of the Tularosa Basin or the mountains. Oliver Milton Lee was an important figure in New Mexico history and a probable outlaw. He settled here at the mouth of Dog Canyon and built a home for his ranch. He was instrumental in bringing water to the basin, establishing Alamogordo, and bringing the railroad here. He once engaged in a gunfight with infamous Sheriff Pat Garrett, which resulted in the death of Garrett's deputy. He also was accused of stealing cattle as well as a suspect in a kidnapping and murder case. Long story short, Lee eventually became a politician holding office in the state senate. His ranch home has been completely rebuilt and guided tours are the only way to see it. However, while we were there this past summer, there was a staffing shortage and the visitor center was closed as well as no tours being offered of the home. Tours or not, Oliver Lee Memorial State Park is a beautiful place. Like so many publicly run campgrounds that we visit, the campsites are designed for optimal immersion into the landscape. Besides sites for RVs, there were welcoming spaces for car and tent campers. Many had sheltered structures with tables, and the bathrooms and showers were cleaned daily. While we were there, we only heard the sounds of nature and were mesmerized by the views of the mountains and the valley. Summer heat and the potential for rattlesnakes deterred us from hiking the Dog Canyon Trail that climbs five miles to the top, gaining 3,200 feet in elevation. And there's no cell signal in the canyon, in case of emergency. But we look forward to returning in cooler weather and tackling at least part of the trail. If you've ever driven the portion of the I-10 freeway as it goes through New Mexico, you can't miss the billboards, from The Thing to Native American souvenirs, and these for the world's largest pistachio. There was no way once we were finally in Alamogordo we were going to miss this. After a few snapshots of the giant pistachio, we took the farm tour with our guide James, who told us the story of the giant nut. Well, we want to thank you guys for taking the tour today That's here at Against Pistachio Land. My name is James, I'm your tour guide for today. We're going to start 
about the germline talking about the world's largest pistachio back there that is 30 feet of concrete and steel built in honor of our founder mr tom mcginn about a year after his passing his son tim my best friend of 40 years trying to think of some way to honor his dad kids we could be going to disney world <laughs> we could be going to six flags but nope we're going to drive six hours so y'all can go see the world's largest strawberry <laughs> and that was tim's childhood and so we figured that another roadside piece of americana best way to honor his dad's memory so that tree right there he's got 20 girlfriends right there the ratio out here on the farm is 1 to 20. we've got trees here on the property that are 40 plus years old and give us anywhere from 40 to 50 pounds every other year now that's an every other year kind of thing because one year she will look like this for you guys in the very very back i'm pointing to the tree this one right here top to bottom side to side completely filled with pistachios and then the very next year the tree on your other side it will look like that. This is going to be a very, very light year for us because a lot of our trees look exactly like that. She just got to take a year off, get into her bathrobe and slippers and watch her shows if she DVR. Tom and Tim are amateur winemakers and wanted to make some coin off of that. So we started planting grapevines back in 1995. And when I say we, I mean me. <laughs> what else are best friends for than free labor? Well, we do Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, Gewürztraminer, Zinfandel. Uh, we've got Sangiovese, and we've also got Merlot. The tour was really enjoyable thanks to James, but now it was time for some tasting. Good? Yeah. Dill pickle. Flavors that ranch roasted. So we're pretty nearby Roswell from here, which, if you can figure out, that's why there's a lot of UFO stuff here. It's almost carbonated. It's like got a, got like a. I think it's the white grapes. Okay. Yeah, that way you can drink a lot more, right? <laughs> That's really fruity. I don't normally like sweets, but. That's really got a nice yeah, flavor. It's, it's a blend between our reds and our whites. So the whites make it like carbonated sweet, and yeah. then the reds make it that, that little tart. And what are the costs on them? Each bottle is $14 a piece. If you buy two or more, it's 10% off and you get a free cork sleeve. Oh, okay. Wine production in New Mexico has a long history. Brought here by the Spanish colonists, vineyards continue to live here. The high altitude and moderately dry weather make the Tularosa Basin a perfect place for grapes, as well as pistachios and pecans. The home of New Mexico's first and largest producing pistachio groves is Eagle Ranch. Today, it's still a totally self-contained operation, growing, harvesting, processing, and marketing their heart of the desert pistachios directly to the consumer. Vineyards for wine were added to the product line in 2002. 12,000 vines were initially planted, and there is now a total of 24,000 vines. They grow seven different varieties of grapevines, making the production of a wide range of wines possible. Jamie was aiming for the ice cream counter, as well as sampling some of their pistachio chocolates and candies. The patio here at Eagle Ranch is the perfect place to enjoy that glass of wine or ice cream, but it's also available for private events. They were setting up for a reunion when we visited. Eagle Ranch's Heart of the Desert has three other beautiful retail outlets conveniently located in southern New Mexico. If you're passing through the area on I-10 or I-25, you might want to make one of them your rest stop. 
You can also send a gift from Eagle Ranch as most of their products are available to order online. At this point in the day, we've sampled enough and we were ready for a tasty meal. And there's one more place we highly recommend in Alamogordo. For nostalgic fun and delectable food, you gotta stop in at the Heidi Ho Drive-In, which has been in continuous operation since its opening in 1952. We got a Maiton burger and a mushroom Swiss burger. I think this one is yours. Because you saw mushrooms? Some mushrooms on it. Okay. They don't wear roller skates. Jamie got a Maiton burger that's supposed to be on Texas, on Texas toast. toast. And bacon. Yum. So we decided to check this out here in Alamogordo after we uh, drove past yesterday and it was PAX. And it, Heidi Ho is an original drive in. So today, it's while from we, the 50s. When we were sitting here, Jamie says, I wonder what this used to be. And I looked it up and it was built in 1952. It's been Heidi Ho ever since. Yep. And they have Mexican food and burgers and some salads and stuff like that. They have um, dip cones. We'll see if after these giant burgers, if we have any room for a dip cone. But yeah, it seems like it's a popular place. Let me put that. his big mouth. He's good. Mm -hmm. I got the mushroom Swiss. It's so good. Really good. Yeah. Heidi Ho. We hope you enjoyed Roaming with Rosie today. For more information on the places featured in this episode, check out the links in the video description, as well as products and equipment we use and recommend. We sometimes do receive a small commission when you use our links for purchases, which is a great way at no additional cost to you to help offset some of our production costs. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos and subscribing to Roaming with Rosie. We'd love to hear from you and encourage your comments and questions. Until next time, see ya. Thank you.